The HVAD system is a ventricular assist device, or VAD, that helps a weakened heart pump blood throughout the body, allowing most patients with advanced heart failure to return to a fuller life. The HVAD pump's small size and integrated inflow cannula allow the device to be implanted completely in the pericardial space directly adjacent to the heart, thereby avoiding abdominal surgery. The driveline cable, constructed with fatigue-resistant conductor wires similar to those used in pacemakers, exits the patient's skin and connects the pump to an externally worn controller. The HVAD controller operates the pump and monitors that it is working correctly. The display on the controller provides you with information about pump performance that includes the blood flow, the speed, and the amount of power being used. The face of the controller has two buttons, the scroll button, which allows you to toggle through information on the controller, and the alarm mute button. The alarm mute button will mute low and medium priority alarms, but not high priority alarms. There are four connectors on the controller, one driveline connector, two power supply connectors, and one data port, which is also used for the alarm adapter. The silver driveline connector should always have the driveline cover in place. When properly positioned, the driveline connector will not be visible. The controller requires two power sources at all times for safety, either two batteries or one battery and either the AC adapter or DC adapter. While active, a patient will typically use two batteries. While relaxing or sleeping, the patient would typically use the AC adapter because it provides power from an electrical outlet for an unlimited period of time. The DC adapter draws power from the electrical outlet in an automobile and may be used when traveling by car. If you respond to a patient using an HVAD system, there are important things you need to take into consideration. This is a continuous flow pump, which means pulses may be difficult to palpate. If you have access to a Doppler, it may be easier to obtain a pulse. Blood pressure may also be difficult to obtain because patients with a continuous flow pump have a very narrow pulse pressure and may only register a single number. The single number represents a mean arterial pressure, or MAP. A MAP that is too high or too low will affect the flow through the pump. If the pump is not alarming, it is likely that there is circulation. If you are treating a responsive patient, the patient or caregiver can be helpful in the management of the equipment. If there is an issue with the pump, the display on the controller will provide two lines of text. The first line will indicate what the alarm is, and the second line will state what action should be taken. Don't be distracted by the pump. VAD patients can still experience other medical conditions, like arrhythmia. If a patient has an arrhythmia, its effect may be different. Patients may be awake and with or without symptoms from ventricular arrhythmias. Depending on your assessment, the VAD patient should be transported to their implanting center or to the closest hospital. If the patient is unresponsive, as in this case, can other assessments can be helpful, especially since pulse and blood pressure may be difficult to obtain. Skin color and temperature, for example, cool and clammy or pink and diaphoretic, give some indications into the patient condition. Follow BLS and ACLS protocol. All medications can be given. The patient can be defibrillated and cardioverted without disconnecting any HVAD system equipment. Chest compressions may pose a risk due to pump location and position of the outflow graft on the aorta, so use clinical judgment when deciding if CPR should be performed. If the patient requires CPR, confirmation of device function should be performed at the hospital. The HVAD pump, if working properly, should be able to circulate blood if, however, there are alarms or indication from the controller that there is no or little flow through the VAD, a couple of steps should be followed. First, make sure the controller is connected to the drive line that exits the abdomen and that there is adequate power connected to the controller. If this doesn't resolve the alarm and the pump is still not working, continue to follow ACLS protocols. To verify pump operation, check the display screen for parameters or alarms. You can also listen over the left chest for pump hum and feel for vibrations of the pump over the left lower chest. 
If the patient is unresponsive but the pump is pumping, look for other causes such as diabetes or stroke. There are various alarms that tell you about the condition of the pump, controller, connections, and power supplies. Alarm conditions are classified as high, medium, or low. A high priority alarm is displayed with a flashing red warning light and unique sound. A medium priority alarm is displayed with a flashing yellow warning light and unique sound. A low priority alarm is displayed with a solid yellow light and unique sound. The message on the controller screen consists of two lines of text. The first line tells you what the alarm is and the second line tells you what to do. The alarm sound will stop and the alarm indicator light will go out when the alarm condition is resolved. Some questions you might have about patient care are, can you give IV fluids? Yes. Can you defibrillate or cardiovert? Yes, and you can do so without adjusting the jewels or disconnecting the device. Can you follow BLS and ACLS guidelines? Yes, but remember, VAD patients may not have detectable pulse or blood pressure. Can you perform CPR? Yes, if required, but confirm pump function following CPR. Can you immobilize the spine? Yes, but when strapping the patient to the board, be sure the drive line exiting the abdomen is not manipulated and the external equipment is not dropped. If you are going to transport a patient, the patient's controller must be powered by two batteries. Don't disconnect both power sources at the same time. Bring all backup equipment with the patient. Patients can be transported via ground or air. Based on the clinical situation, the patient can be transported to the closest hospital or implanting center. If the controller is being powered by an AC adapter, you will need to change power supplies. To disconnect a power supply, as the patient in the video demonstrates, grasp the power cable on the front end of the connector. Turn the connector counterclockwise until it stops. Pull it straight out from the controller. Connect a battery to the controller by grasping the power cable near its connector, leaving the front free to rotate. Line up the solid white arrow on the cable connector with the dot on the controller. Gently push the cable into the controller. Do not twist the connector, but allow it to naturally lock in place. A good connection will result in an audible click. Confirm that the power cable is properly locked in by gently pulling on the cable near the base of the connector. If another power source is not connected within 20 seconds, the power disconnect message will be displayed on the controller and an alarm will sound. Once a second power source is connected to the controller, the alarm will stop. When one battery is depleted to less than 25% capacity, the controller will automatically switch to the other battery. When both batteries are depleted to less than 25% capacity, both battery indicators will switch to one yellow light. An intermittent beep will sound, the alarm indicator will appear yellow, and a message will be displayed on the controller screen to replace battery one. If the battery is not changed within five minutes, the alarm volume will escalate until the battery is exchanged with a fully charged battery. If a depleted battery is not exchanged, eventually a high priority alarm will sound, the alarm indicator will be flashing red, and the message on the controller display will read critical battery. A charged battery or adapter, AC or DC, should be attached immediately to the power port with the critical battery indication. Never disconnect both power sources at one time. A backup controller is included with the HVAD system. The backup controller should be kept with the patient at all times in the unlikely event there is a problem with the original controller. The backup controller will also hold the red alarm adapter. This is for emergency use only and is used to silence the no power alarm when power is removed from a controller that is no longer in use. If a controller needs to be changed, it may be helpful to remember the four P's, power, pump, prevent, and power. The four P's summarize the steps to performing a controller exchange. The first P is for power. 
Connect one power source to the new controller. Please note that a VAD stopped alarm will start. This is expected behavior and will end once the pump drive line is connected. Restarting the pump is the priority, so don't worry about silencing the alarm until after getting the pump restarted. The second P is for pump. Pull back the white drive line cover on the drive line to expose the silver connector. Disconnect the drive line from the original controller by pulling the silver connector away from the controller. Do not disconnect by pulling on the drive line cable. Connect the drive line to the new controller by aligning the two red marks and pushing together. The pump should restart. Verify the pump is working by checking the controller display for speed, shown in RPMs, flow, shown in liters per minute, and power, shown in watts. The third P is for prevent. Once you have verified that the pump is working, you can prevent the no power alarm from sounding on the original controller. If the alarm adapter is available, insert it into the data port, the connector with the dust cap, on the original controller. You can now remove all power from the original controller and no alarm should sound. If a red alarm adapter is not available, you can silence the no power alarm on the original controller by pressing and holding the alarm mute and scroll buttons at the same time for at least five seconds. Release both buttons. You can now remove all power from the original controller and no alarm should sound. The fourth P is again for power. Connect a second power source to the new controller. If you removed power before silencing the no power alarm, reconnect a power source and follow the steps just reviewed to prevent the alarm. On the new controller, slide the white drive line cover over the silver connector. The HVAD system is a ventricular assist device that is surgically implanted to assist a failing native heart pump blood more efficiently. The HVAD system requires the internal pump to be connected to external electronics, including a controller and power. This pump is a continuous flow pump, so it may be difficult to palpate a pulse or obtain a blood pressure. BLS and ACLS protocols should be followed. Do not be distracted by the device. These patients can experience life-threatening emergencies unrelated to the device. We recommend working with your medical director and the implant center to develop a VAD-related response procedure.